The first, most obvious uh, argument for tariffs is, well, they do it. I mean, China has very high tariffs on American goods. And China has, for a long time, maintained high tariffs. So they're significantly lower than they used to be. And generally, China has been on a trend towards lowering tariffs significantly and dramatically. And, um, but they have higher tariffs than we have on their goods. So on their goods in the past, we have had, I don't know, something like 4% tariffs. And uh, they have had in the past, uh, uh, or they still have, although they just went up, they just raised tariffs on $60 billion worth of goods. But before that, they had tariffs of something like 10 to 20% of our goods. So there was a, a clear asymmetry in tariffs before the Chinese, before uh, uh, Trump escalated. Now, right now, tariffs on half of the Ch about half of Chinese goods is about 25% post uh, uh, Trump's increase, and he wants to impose 25% on the rest of Chinese of Chinese goods. Now, let's understand what a tariff is, because this is the other thing that boggles mind. Because people say, well, the Chinese pay for tariffs. We'll get to that. But let's first understand what a tariff is. A tariff is a tax on imported goods. So it's paid by the importer, by the, the, the firm, the company, the person who imports goods from China, pays an additional tax ab above any kind of sales tax or in Europe, any kind of VAT or any other kind of tax. There is an additional tax now that is called a tariff, an importation tax, that the importer pays the government. And then the importer turns around and sells those goods. If it's Walmart, they sell it to all of us, or Best Buy, or whoever it happens to be. They then sell it. Now, they can't afford, and they, and they have no reason, to absorb the cost of this tax. So what do they do? They raise prices, so prices go up. So at the end of the day, the person who pays the taxes is the consumer. Now, it's also true that when you have high tariffs, you buy fewer foreign goods. So tariffs go up to 25%. So now we look at Chinese goods and say, oh, Chinese goods are 25% more expensive. So we're going to buy fewer of them. In that sense, that's what hurt the Chinese. What hurts the Chinese is we're buying fewer of their stuff because it's more expensive for us. We can't afford it. Or now it's not competitive with other stuff we can buy. So we take the Chinese out of the picture, or, or we take a certain percentage of what the Chinese imports out of the picture, and we'll get to all the complexities because there's a lot of complexity here. But basically, we take the Chinese. Americans are still going to pay that tax on Chinese goods, but now German goods, American goods, other goods become more competitive for a while because there's no tariff on them, so they're going to be cheaper than the Chinese goods, maybe. I'm not sure 25% is enough. But of course, many goods that are made in China are only made in China, or for the most part, made in China. And what happens when you take a competitor out of the business? What happens when you exclude a major competitor like China? What do the other firms typically do? Well, they raise prices. So typically what happens is prices go up across the board in the product that now has a tariff against it, at least in industries that have little competition because you've just artificially priced out a competitor. You've priced out Chinese manufacturers because you've raised their, car, their price by 25% artificially. So uh, this is the argument. The Chinese do this to American goods, right? Because they have a high tariff. So we should do it to Chinese goods. Now, who does raising tariffs hurt? Well, it's domestic consumers. So domestic consumers are now paying more, either 25% if they're still buying Chinese stuff, or they're paying more for non-Chinese stuff because of the reduction in competition. Right? And that's what Donald Trump, by the way, said uh, in one of his ignorant tweets. He said, well, just don't buy Chinese stuff. Buy other people's stuff. It's easy. So 
we can study this, right, as if you need to study it, because economic theory is pretty clear. Again, it's pretty simple. You, you reduce competition, prices go up. So here's a, a simple example, a simple example that has happened in recent times under Trump. And here's what happened. In January of 2018, uh, the Trump administration increased the tariffs on washing machines, on imported washing machines, primarily for South Korea. South Korea is the biggest importer of washing machines into the United States. Samsung and LG, they increased the tariffs between 20 to 50 percent on imported washing machines. And economic theory would say that the price of all washing machines in the United States, both imported and domestic, would rise in roughly the same proportion as the tariff. That's basic economic theory. So what actually happened? Well, people actually looked at it and, and evaluated it and looked a year later, have washing machine prices actually gone up? Well, it turns out that yes, surprise, surprise, shocking to anybody, I guess, who is not an economist the price of washing machines went up by 12%. Now you say, wait a minute, 12%, but that's half of the tariff. The tariff was between, between 20 to 50. It was average like on 25 because of the way it was implemented. So it should go up, it should go up by 25 and it only went up by 12. Aha. It turns out that washing machine and, and uh, washing machine manufacturers figured out that it that it would do them harm with customers to raise it by 25%. So they only raised it by 12%, but they got to make up the difference because they're not going to subsidize this, right? Somebody pays the taxes and it has to be, it has to be American consumers. So what they did is they raised the price of another good that you always buy with a washing machine. What is that? What is the good you always buy with a washing machine? Well, it's a dryer. Dryer tariffs did not go up. It's fascinating, right? No tariffs on dryers, only on washing machines. And yet, the price of dryers also went up by about 12%. So total increase was about 25%, because dryers and washing machines, I guess, cost about the same. And they usually bought in pairs. And the total price went up by 25%, exactly what the theory would have predicted. So exactly what I've been saying all along, that the people who pay for the tariff are consumers. Consumers pay the tariff. Now, what happened to the South Korean manufacturers of washing machines? Well, nothing much. Maybe they sell a few fewer washing machines in the United States because maybe the American companies can produce, can actually, actually sell more washing machines. So they did this study. They did this study. So, oh, the other thing to, uh, uh, Trump says is $100 billion was collected in tariffs. That's a big amount. That's great. We got, the Treasury got, and we'll get to this argument that, that more tax revenue and somehow tax revenue is a good thing. He gets this idea of, of uh, tax revenue has gone up. And the second advantage is more jobs in America created because uh, American manufacturers of washing machines will sell more washing machines because the competitors have been, you know, burdened with the 25% tariff. Okay, so they calculated. They calculated the amount of the, of the tariff, the amount of this extra tax that Washington collected. And just so you know and understand that it's Americans paying it, it's the American Treasury that's collecting it. I mean, the American Treasury doesn't collect taxes from China. It only collects taxes from Americans. So, of course, Americans are paying for it. All right. So, Americans paid $82 million in tariffs, in other words, taxes, on washing machines during this period. 
over the last year. And at the same time, about 1,600 new American jobs were created. 1,600 new American jobs were created. Yes, make America great again. 1,600 jobs in making washing machines. You know, or in the whole, you know, uh, uh, what do you call it, production cycle in the whole supply chain. 1,600 new jobs. This is terrific. Now, if you divide the $82 million, which consumers paid in taxes, to create 1,600 jobs, it cost $800,000 for every job created. Every job created cost taxpayers, buyers a washing machine who paid a tax on it, $800,000. Now, this is worse, much worse, than the Obama stimulus. Much worse than the Obama stimulus. Where I don't, I don't remember, but like every job that was created cost two hundred, you know, uh, two hundred thousand dollars or something. Every basically minimum wage job. But here it's eight hundred thousand dollars. What did we gain from this exactly? Who won here? Nobody won. And maybe the American uh, washing machine industry picked up some market share and is more profitable because it's selling at a higher margin. And, and long term, it's going to do better. But at what cost? And of course, you, the buyer of washing machines, were forced to buy an inferior product at a higher price than otherwise through force. This is the moral point. You were not left free to make a decision about what washing machine to buy. But that decision was manipulated by government in favor of domestic producers. So if you love Samsung or you love the LG washing machine, some president or bureaucrat in Washington who decided that Kmo or Maytag are better or they create American jobs and it's part of make America great again, you should sacrifice for the sake of making America great again. You sacrifice your tax money. I mean, your dollars, your wallet. Everything is going to cost you 20, 25% more expensive because somebody decided you shouldn't buy Korean washing machines. How, do you, how does this work? How, how is this right? How is this defensible? I'm, I'm waiting for the super chat to tell me. How is this defensible? By what standard is it defensible? I mean, I get people who say, look, Trump was better than Hillary. But he sucks. He's really, really bad. And this trade stuff is stupid. And I wish he didn't do it. I get that. Okay. I have no problem with that. But people who defend everything he does, that's just mindless tribalism, mindless, unthinking loyalty to what? To a mindless, unthinking president. So the empirical evidence is clear. The theoretical evidence is clear. Morally, consumers pay for tariffs. So it's true that China has higher tariffs than the United States. And who pays for them? Well, the Chinese do. Chinese consumers. I think it's horrible that China has high tariffs. I would argue against China having high tariffs. I would, yeah, I mean, it's despicable. But the main victim of those tariffs are the Chinese consumers. And it's true. It's true. To some extent, American manufacturers, because they could sell more in China if tariffs were lower. But American manufacturers, you know, they make as much as they make. They sell to whoever will buy them. We have no control, should have no control, over what China does or doesn't do economically. There's a lot of economic policies that if China implemented, we would be better off and they would be better off. 
But that's their problem primarily. It's their problem primarily. So if I was a Chinese, I'd be really pissed off at Chinese tariffs. China is just as irrational. China is just a statist, more so even, than Donald Trump. But they are both on the same level. They're both ignorant of economics. They're both statists in their belief that the economy should be managed and controlled by a central power. And they are both inflicting damage on their own citizens. So look, China's economic policies are terrible. So the way to fight them is to mimic them. The way to get China to behave better, the way to get China to treat its own people more justly by opening up their markets, by having a freer market, by lowering tariffs, is to make Americans suffer. It's to raise the prices of washing machines and lots of other goods on Americans. By the way, the washing machine tariff had nothing to do with China. It's primarily in South Korea. It had everything to do with protecting an American industry from foreign competition. It has everything to do with our central planner in charge trying to manipulate and run the U.S. economy and create so-called wonderful manufacturing jobs. So it's not, it's not that Trump, I mean, everybody, the other thing everybody tells me is Trump really wants zero tariffs with the world. If only everybody else had zero tariffs, we would have zero tariffs. That's just not true. Or, I mean, when Europeans offered zero tariffs on cars or car parts or whatever, Trump turned them down. But, you know, China, and would Trump stop subsidizing all American businesses? No. Would Trump stop all subsidies on washing machines, cars, and everything else coming into America? No. He has no indication. Once in a while, Larry Kudlow whis whispers in his ear, say something about zero tariff world. That would be the ideal. And he says it, but he doesn't believe it. If you read his tweets, if you listen to what he actually says, he has always, throughout his history, going back to the 1980s, believed in managed trade. That's what fair trade is. That's the, the name for fair trade is managed trade. And fair trade, by the way, is a term is a term adopted by, um, it's a term adopted, it's adopted by Trump, but was created by the left, the radical left, who opposes trade, right? Listen to, read Trump's tweets. I'm not psychologizing, just read Trump's tweets. Read what he writes about trade. Read how he talks about trade in it as a zero sum game. Read how he, he writes this, he says, every time we trade with, Canada, he wrote, and we have, because we have a trade deficit, although we don't really have a trade deficit, he doesn't even know the facts, but every time we have a trade deficit, we lose. Come on, people. Read what he actually says. Not one, not when somebody writes his speeches for him, but when he actually says what he actually believes. All right, so they do it. Yeah, they do it and they suffer the consequences. Economic growth in China would be dramatically higher if they had zero tariffs. Economic growth in China would be dramatically higher if they didn't regulate and control and try to run, centrally plan much of their economy. Luckily for them, they don't do that for their entire economy. But for those parts of the economy that they do that, they suffer. They suffer. So because the Chinese suffer, because the Chinese have stupid, bad economic policies, we should adopt the same? It just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. What we need today, what I call the new intellectual, would be any man or woman who is willing to think. Meaning, any man or woman who knows that man's life must be guided by reason, by the intellect, not by feelings, wishes, whims, or mystic revelations. Any man or woman who values his life and who does not give, want to give in to today's cult of despair, cynicism, and impotence, and does not intend to give up the world, 
to the dark ages and to the role of the collectivist brute.